I'm JJ and welcome to the news. I'm Dave and this is all the news you want to hear. Well, maybe not, but we'll do our best. Hey, the, the first news story we'll go back to JJ. Okay, and for the first news story, hey, isn't this the way you like to see the news? <laughs> there was a missing policeman was found in Bell Gardens. An 11 year veteran of the city police force was found Friday, hours after he had abandoned a patrol car about 80 miles away with his service revolver, handcuffs, and shirt locked inside, authorities said. Officer, well, we'll leave his name out. The man was 36 years old, appeared to be disorientated when he was found in Victorville by the San Bernardino County Sheriff's deputies. He had driven to work at 6.15 a.m. as usual, then drove away a city patrol car without authorization, officials said. The Bell Guards police cruiser was discovered by a Victorville resident nearly four hours later in the desert city, 80 miles northeast of Los Angeles. He appeared to have no recollection of the episode, said Bell, Bell Gardens police chief, our, our police force at work. David? Hey, today, speaking of our illustrious police force, or one we wish we had, Dick Tracy opens to the amazement and the wonder of everybody waiting. Dick Tracy, played by Warren Beatty, creates the best comic strip movie yet. His girlfriend, the infamous Madonna, this is where they met. They also broke up on the set of Universal. Of course, the movie was long since over. What were they doing? We don't want to talk about it. The gangland drama, to wit, grace, and unique visual styles. There is also a sneak appearance by Al Pacino. Look for him in mustache and beard, also appearing on one of the front newspapers of the article. Dustin Hoffman, and of course, Madonna in her dress to kill little black outfit. I think we have a roll in from someplace. Yes, maybe not. Okay, two thumbs up, Dick Tracy, Siskel and Ebert. Keep going, keep going. And extraordinary, Gene Siskel. Two thumbs up, Siskel and Ebert. If you're wondering where to catch this marvel, grab your sleeping bag and head over to Westwood, uh, Century City, and Beverly Hills the, at the Beverly Connection. Also in Hollywood, the Hollywood Pacific shows Universal City. Universal City, let's get real, 750 to get in, three bucks to park. Try one of the other places. Not that we would ever say anything about Universal City, but hey, you're making 50 million on the picture. Why charge us for parking? And that's about it. Let's see what else we got in the news. Bad with the news. Uh, the killer of a nude man will face no charges. Remember that, folks. You're going to have to have this happen to you. In Van Nuys, a Reseda homeowner who shot and killed a naked intruder two weeks ago will not face criminal charges, a Los Angeles de deputy district attorney said Friday. The man of Reseda, 38 years old, I wonder if he's came pretty close to that cop stage. Yeah. yeah, I was just wondering so about they that. They disappeared together. I don't know, but one shot. <laughs> anyway, back to the nude shooter here. Uh, he fatally shot a man on June 1st after he flung himself through the sliding glass door of the man's home. Get shot after going through a glass door nude. What <laughs> happened to you? After, after reviewing all the evidence, we determined the killing was justified and in self-defense, Dep Deputy District Attorney said again. The man also broke into three other houses in the Reseda area that night and terrorized other residents. None of the residents were injured, but we still haven't found out how bad the man was hurt going through that glass window. <laughs> so the man, the man actually broke into the house. He went through a, a glass, without any glass clothes no on. clothes on, naked as a jailbird. Right <laughs> this gentleman needs our, hello, we'll move over to this camera. We're on, no, we're on camera. <laughs> this gentleman needs this is a brand our show, singles folks. lifestyle. <laughs> and in the singles lifestyle, we want to let you know, we always try to do our best to give you up, uh, to keep you updated on the singles lifestyle in Los Angeles. Under here we have, under the social club, adult videos for the lonely, $5.95 and up. All colored adult magazines, $1.49 and up. How much? $1.49 and up. <laughs> Love wear novelties, only the best, we don't want to say, and dolls and more. <laughs> Private adult mini theater, 25 cents, etc. and so forth. This is located throughout the city, so just check your yellow pages. And for those of you who are going there, right afterwards, there are, we do have free health screenings. <laughs> And the number for that would be in Sherman Oaks. Uh, it would be 14006 Riverside. Testing is 123. I guess that's a clock. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> 818 999 97900. For those of you also who just interested, we have the Kennel Club meetings. Friday, Yorkshire Terriers Club of America specialty specialties, Holiday Inn, Torrance, Freedom, Free Admissions. 727-0136. Also, the South Pacific Pekingese Club meets at the Papillion Club 
and there that is San Diego, the San Diego Pomeranian Club of San Diego. Also, the Greater Yorkshire Terrier Club. These are all free. 213-727-0136. Also, bird watching. Ooh, that's good on those long, lonely, cold nights. June 10th. That was like last week, wasn't it? Yeah. So you missed it, you loser. Oh, you could have been out there <laughs> watching them birds. You could have been watching a bird and meeting interesting people. And let's go back to the news. Oh, back to the news. Hey, you remember Mary and Barry? Of course you do. Uh, the mayor of Washington, D.C. Well, my man over here saying, yeah, I remember him. Isn't it nice to know that Mr. Barry has announced recently that he's not going to run for a fourth term so he can direct all of his attention to his trial for drug, drug uh, use and cocaine charges and all the other stuff? His lawyer right here in the paper says, Barry lawyer scoffs at possible plea pact. Washington, Mary and Barry's lawyer on Friday scoffed at any possibility of a last-minute plea agreement that would stop the mayor's cocaine and perjury trial. I scoff at that, too. Scoff, scoff. Yeah, scoff, scoff, scoff. All next week, the trial will proceed, predicted defense attorney R. Kenneth Mundy. Bet on it, believe it, and don't question it. A panel of 12 jurors and six alternates will be seated Monday, and opening statements are scheduled for Tuesday, and Mayor Barry will probably be hung Wednesday, hopefully, but anyway. His attorney's name is Bundy? Monday. Monday. Oh, Monday. M-U-N-D-Y. Yeah, no, it's not from the popular <laughs> TV show, although he's probably better off with that man in charge. He might just he might just pull it out as an insanity plea. As an insanity plea. Yes. Uh, what do you have for us, David? Next up, we have the job market. Ooh, job market yes. in L.A. We may be looking for one we got a for great ourselves. Here. Oh, hey. You, let me tell you. <laughs> so this general, be at the beach by noon. I guess if you're a general, you can be at the beach by noon. No experience. We will train AM hours. Call Ken from 7 to 10 because he has to be on the beach by noon. 818-780-2001. All right, guys. How do you train to go to the beach by noon? I don't know. Especially if you've ever been in Los Angeles traffic, it is impossible to make it to the beach by noon. Well, especially that means if you're going to stop by the job. Yeah. It's got to be on your car phone. Maybe. Also, Tella Candy. Ten dollars an hour for Tele Candy. This is interesting. What has Candy got? That's worth ten dollars an hour plus bonus. That's right, ten dollars an hour plus bonus. Call Doreen three six eight zero eight eight nine. Also, Doreen. Doreen. Ooh. Did you get that number? Yeah. yeah. Right truck right there. armored truck driver. That just that sounds like something. While you're on the way to the beach, stop off. And that is Loomis Armor Car. It is currently hiring. See Wednesday or Sunday. I love that. What if you don't have the paper? What, you know, Wednesday or Sunday. Well, that's why we got this show here, so we can read it. Yeah. Wanted radio announcers, television announcers, and hang on. Yeah, take that out for us. That was for me. <laughs> Um, anyway, back to the paper. Yes. Oh, yes. On the real estate market. We weren't going to do a real estate market, but we have a problem in this here, and we have been desperately seeking an answer for it. Here is our solution to Dale's problem. Two bedroom, one bathroom townhouse, new carpeting garage, large patio, prefer. This is in the Saugus Raceway area. In well, the right, next, yeah, right, right in the raceway area. Right. One in the $115,000. I think the front office could come up with a townhouse for the poor guys who go out to Saugus every night so they can party it out. Oh, they changed the camera one. Turn the light on when we're supposed to change. <laughs> this is a new show, folks. Listen, we have a, we have a, a, a news break here. This item is of service to everybody. NASA study shows no threat from space tomatoes. Yeah, Remember the tomato seeds that set yeah. up? In the they night? gave all these kids a little spacey tomato. Yeah, well, they, they uh, were going to bring it back after a year, but with the uh, Challenger disaster, the uh, uh, long, uh, long-term long uh, effects program up there in the space station, they took some time before they brought it back. So they uh, they just now got the plants back. But they say here in the paper that NASA says they're perfectly harmless. They're growing tomatoes. They're going to be able to be eaten uh, very shortly, about another uh, couple of weeks or so. And they say there's no uh, no ill effects expected because they were uh, growing up and spent the seeds were in space. But uh, Man, uh, you remember the attack of the killer tomato? I think we're, yeah. this is a prelude to the attack yes. of the killer tomatoes, as oh, you yes. can see right there. NASA said, folks, so if these killer tomatoes come to your town, call NASA. Yes, these were radiation seeds. The nice thing is they're going to feed them to children, so who cares? Well, I'm going to get me a vegematic. <laughs> I'm going to get me a vegematic and go out looking for them myself so I can get rid of them, probably. On the vital news, mother says she can't get rid of her daughter fast enough. Wow. Dear Ann Landers, my husband and I have four children, three boys and a 
girl. Through the years, we foolishly gave them everything they wanted. We took out loans and had charge accounts all over town. This woman has got some problems already. Mm. Our daughter, who is now 23, is engaged to be married in the two years. Poor guy. We can't afford the kind of weddings that she wants, but I did agree to give her $2,000 towards it. She says that's not enough. I need so many things over the years and never bought them. Now we just now we must make some repairs on our house or it will fall down. My mother is lending us the money, interest free, and I've budgeted a small monthly payment. My daughter resents the fact that I would borrow for repairs and not give her a fancier wedding. She gives me $15 a week for room and board, and I said this is okay. She could not snap at me. <laughs> We're not terribly serious here, that's okay. Where was I? I lost my place now. Her three brothers didn't turn out like this. I can't believe her attitude. She does absolutely nothing around the house and tells me, you're home all day. That's your job. We fight all the time. I am on stomach medication because of my nerves and heading for God knows what. I've asked her to move out and she says, if I force her to move out, we will never see her again. I would say, ta-ta. <laughs> I can't, I simply can't Adios. wait. Adios. I know. <laughs> Don't was, let that door hit you. That would solve my problem right there. You're gone. <laughs> Ciao. <laughs> Have a good one. Yeah, right when you can. Let's see. I cannot wait two years. Has anyone else gone through this? I realize now I would, I should have brought her up differently, and I can't turn back the clock. Please advise me. Yeah, well, uh, just for our, I know. You know anybody just going through this yourself? <laughs> no, really. I know a lot of people living out on the street because they tried to go through this with their parents. It's like, huh, you're out. You're history. Yeah. I don't even see Ann Landers. Do we even need Ann Landers' advice on this one? I mean, kick the chick out. What does Ann say, though? Let's just get us. If you think taking out another loan will solve your problems, think again. That spoiled brat will find some other way to stick it hey, to you. Let's hear it for Ann. She finally got one finally right. finally got one right. A young woman. Your mother's on the phone. She wants to talk to you about moving out. Oh, Dave. <laughs> hey, you're still at home? No. Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have a nice box in Hollywood. Oh. It's right on the corner. Right on the corner? Unless the garbage collector, then I got to find another box. Yeah. yeah. More than 300 a week. A young woman who makes no more than more than 300 a week and lives at home should pay at least $60. $60 a week for room and board? God, let, shall we look, check the real estate section, honey? Hey, that's only 240 a month. <laughs> that's 240 a month. We're talking about $1,100. If you got your own place, if you're not having to fight the cockroaches, you're talking $1,100 a month. But Ann Lander says just that, kick the kicker out, do it. Meanwhile, talk to the doctor or clergyman. I would definitely not tell her future husband what she's like because you'll be stuck with her forever. That's right, keep it a secret if you can at all. What's our word, do we have a word for the day? Yes, we have uh, now for the, uh, the um, uh, educational part of our show, we'll teach you folks a word out there. It did, like Sesame Street, didn't it? We call an embarrassing failure a fiasco. <laughs> Does that kind of remind you of what's going hey. on here? The word is from the Italian and means a bottle. He refers a in particular to any, I just said a bottle, <laughs> I, those Italians, probably a bottle of vino or something. He refers in particular to any substandard or misshapen glass bottle. Okay, that's what it means. Italian audiences used to shout fiasco at any singer who failed to please, unkindly suggesting that the performer's voice was so bad it could shatter glass. What a fiasco. Now, what a fiasco. Is, it, is it live or is it fiasco? Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. Anyway, don't you feel better that you now know these things? Bob. While you're out there, can you get me the piece of paper that just fell on the ground? It accidentally crumpled up and fell on the ground. That's our next story. Oh, we should all wait the next story. <laughs> <laughs> we should all meet Bob because Bob is our special guest for the day. Come on in here, Bob. Come on in here, Bob. We're going to interview Bob. Well, you can sit down. We, we got a chair a and a microphone and everything. over there, Bob. No, go around the other way, Bob, please. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Don't sit across in front of my camera. Yeah. We're stars, Bob. Okay. Do you have a dressing room? Hook the Do microphone I have a dressing up room? to you, Bob. <laughs> Bob, hook the microphone to you. Plug it in. Take off the he headset. This is why he works as a floor manager and not one of the stars. Right. Plug it in. Just stick it on the front either. So hook it to your mustache. Hey, Bob's ready. Do we have a shot of this? This is yeah. this is this, this is, is backstage coming on live. Yeah. Yes. Bob, so what do you do here? Not much. Do you play a lot, Bob? I know. Can we even hear him in the booth? Am I on? Well, your microphone's kind of upside down, but I guess that wouldn't make too much of a matter if they turn it up loud. Yeah. Can you hear me? 
Yeah, we I can hear, hear you. you. Yeah. Uh -huh. hear you Whether you're on tape or not is another question. You don't do much here, Bob. And Bob, how much do they pay you for not doing much here? Absolutely nothing. Well, that's you're overpaid. He earns his money. He earns his money. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Dropped. Bob, of course, is the one responsible for dropping the picture of Dick Tracy. You noticed earlier. So if you want to say anything, write to Bob. Robert, letters to Bob, care of Cablevision. What's our address? Chatworth. We don't know. Hey, the post office knows where it's at. We stumbled into the building this morning. They put us behind the, the guy with a stack of bills. He'll, yeah. he'll know it. He can get them all the time. Care of Bob. Bob, since we're about to do horoscopes, let's start off with Bob. Bob is an Aquarius, born January to February 18th. Just January, January obscure, January, any time during January, I suppose. Okay, staying home means you'll have an answering, you'll, what? You'll be answering the phone all day. All right. Take a little trip across the town and visit relatives. But be home early, a romantic evening with someone who's never boring will cheer you up. Ooh, who's Ooh. that, Bob? Ooh, Ooh. I live alone. Ooh. 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 Yeah, it's a hot time yeah. today, Bob. <laughs> Maybe the puppy. The puppy. The yeah, puppy. The puppy, yes. <laughs> what? <laughs> yes. Yes, yeah, puppy dog. Any more questions for Bob? Uh, no, no, no. Bob doesn't do much. Really. Bob doesn't do much. So it's not much. Bob does, <laughs> however, know exactly where the candy machine is. The he does. Machine is. He yes. Does. If you need any place to hide in this building, Bob knows where it's at. Bob knows where that's at. Yeah. Hey, if your birthday is in June, June 16th today, you sure you're sure to get the right. I can't read. <laughs> you're sure to get the recognition this year all up, baby. for the value of a team of being a team member. A new love comes in July. Ooh. Continue to live frugally. Though your income increases this summer, ooh, ooh. oh! So if you're born today, you got a you got a raise coming, honey. Oh, I want to meet you. Oh, we born today. <laughs> In September, establish a fundamental understanding at home. Where's that little woman? Oh no! <laughs> Important health questions to be answered. Uh oh, I don't want to talk about health questions. We don't want to get into that. Scorpio, that's me. Health worries are probably all you had. Oh, good. We would just say we don't want to talk about that. Oh, Paul, worries are probably all in your head. Why? Because we're all psychotic. Do your best effort. Efforts may backfire. Put them off. Possibly you receive a message from an admirer this evening. I got to spend the whole evening at home. Halfway? Halfway between what? Oh, oh, halfway. <laughs> Capricorn. We got JJ over here. JJ is a Capricorn. Without realizing it, you could throw a monkey wrench into your family plan. Do you own a monkey wrench? Yes, I don't have a family. Do they have any plans? No. No plans, no family. Feel sorry for yourself. Can affect your health. Use a light touch all day. Ooh, am I supposed to feel sorry for myself? Hey, Bob, we're getting this. We all got something going on this evening, except this one is a light touch. Oh. <laughs> So we gotta rush our we gotta rush ourselves home. We're talking to Bob. Okay. What's our next news story? Well, the next news story is kind of the offbeat section of the news. Uh, we'll take it right out of the thing here. Uh, on this day, today is Saturday, June 16th, the 167th day of 1990. There are 198 days left in the year. How many days before Christmas? Think of that one. 50 years ago, on June 16, 1940, a pro-communist government was installed in the Baltic state of Lithuania. You remember Lithuania? Yeah. Following an invasion of Soviet forces, neighboring Latva and Estonia underwent a similar fate in the days that followed. This is the, the whole Baltic area fell back there. And on this date in 1567, Mary, Queen of Scots, was imprisoned in Loch Leven Castle in Scotland. I wonder what she did as well. And in 1858, a speech in Springfield, Illinois, Senate candidate Abraham Lincoln said the slavery issue had to be resolved, declaring a house divided against itself cannot fall. You agree with that, Bob? Yeah. Okay, thank Divided you. Divided against itself cannot stand. Cannot stand. Oh. <laughs> I rewrote Lincoln's thing there. Okay. In 1883, baseball's first Ladies' Day took place as the New York Gothams offered free admission to, for women to a game against the Cleveland Spiders. New York won 5-2. to two. You know, there still is no the Gothams, men's game, have men's Gotham, day. Have the Gothams actually like been in the World Series lately? No, no, yeah, <laughs> this is an old team. In 1903, the Ford Motor Company was incorporated. In 1955, Pope Pius XII excommunicated Argentine President Juan Domingo Perón as a uh, ban that was lifted eight years later. In 1961, Soviet ballet dancer Rudolf Nuyev defected to the West while his troupe was in Paris. Because frankly, Ava Perón was so cute. Ava was so 
horoscope yeah. you couldn't bet. Now, today's birthday, speaking of horoscopes, author Eric Siegel is 53, author Joyce Carol Oates is 52, actress Joan Van Ark is 47, boxo Roberto Duran, no mas Duran, is 39, and the thought for today, folks, is by Eba, Abba Eben, rather, the Israel diplomat, is history teaches us that men and nations believe wisely, behave wisely, and believe wisely once they have exhausted all other alternatives. Don't forget that. That's interesting. Now, what do you got? Folks, for? well, we've hit the halfway point in our show, and we've still yet to come up with a decent news article, but we will try to by the end of the show. Early detection is lifeline for dog with breast cancer. Ooh. I, I have noticed three little lumps around a 12-year-old beagle's nipples. We won't What's talk he about doing that. The beagle's nipples. <laughs> doing a, a cancer oh. thing. You're supposed to be, do total cancer detection once once a month. Do we have any experts on that? Once a month is it? I don't know. They are about the size of peas, and could this be something serious? The answer is quite yes. Female dogs can develop breast cancer, just like humans, especially as they start getting older. The lumps that you describe should be checked immediately by your veterinarian. Should humans do this to humans? As well? Humans should do this to humans too. It's more probably a little bit more interesting than a beagle. <laughs> it would be our civic duty to perform. I would imagine at least once a month. At least once My a God, day. if you can, I want at least I think you do it once a day. It would be so much, so much more interesting. <laughs> And so much more. I mean, I'm off of medicine. Fantasy, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> Breast cancer lumps usually are firm, dense, and often near the nipple. The mass can be moved or fixed underneath the skin and may vary greatly in size. <laughs> Dang, this was my dream come true. I didn't know this. Dolly Parton. I didn't know this was unhealthiness. <laughs> I didn't know. <laughs> Over symptom, other symptoms. Oh, over symptoms. Over <laughs> We're talking about the opposites. Other symptoms might include depression and weakness, loss of appetite, and weight loss. So if she wakes up in the middle of the night and vomits. It could be. It might not be your fault. <laughs> your veterinarian may be able to feel masses in other breast tissue, indicating the spread of main cancer mass. Your dog also might have a fever, pale gums, and. Watery discharge. That's this all sounds disgusting. What we're basically trying to tell you is check your dogs, check your family, and check the loved ones and the neighbors. Okay, now for the sports, the moment you've always been waiting for. The Dodgers, <coughs> that uh, semi-pro team from Chavez Ravine, uh, lost their fifth in a row. They lost three to one in the thirteenth inning. Is he dancing inning. or sliding? In I don't face. know. They got this guy. I think he's trying to Can run out. Of, he's camera. trying to run out of the stadium because he's fearful the fans will. Uh, can you keep it on that right there? See that, that Dodger player there? Um, we won't say who he is. Looks like he's trying to get the hell out of the Dodger stadium because uh, the way they're stinking it up. Anyway, the Angels, though, uh, they lost, too, but they're doing a little better. And in the U.S. Open today, Tim Simpson's leading with a 9-under par, followed by Jeff Slubman, 8-under, Mike Donald at 7, Mark Brooks at 6, Scott Simpson, the one-time winner of the, of the U.S. Open, and Hale Irwin is at 5-under. Uh, Curtis Strange, the going for three in a row, a three-peat of the U.S. Open, uh, is 1-under. And there's still two rounds to play. Now, the U.S. Open, as you all know, is a uh, very first prestigious golf event, and uh, I happened to watch it the other day, the first round of it, and they had some uh, really bad shots going on, really bad shots in this thing, folks. You should have seen I play better than some of these guys out there, but they're playing in Illinois, so what do you expect? Uh, Snowing in Illinois, right? It was, bad, bad. <laughs> it was bad, bad. Just thought we'd get into, before we talk about our this week's commentary, Thought we would get into, we just happened to be glancing through the real estate section. Perfect starter, $159,000. Beautiful house for your first home, $347,000. Get real. <laughs> get real. Okay, now for the lighter side, folks. Cartoon time on the news. That's Jake. I'm going to hold this up here. Which camera's going to get this? Camera two? Okay, camera two. Well, camera here three is. is your camera, so I'll turn you back to it. Camera three, okay. <laughs> i got to read this a little bit, so I'm going to have to hold up. this. this. What continent is it anywhere where they don't eat eggs for breakfast? I see Jake right there and he says, uh, down here below the caption says, they call it a continental breakfast because if they called it cantaloupe, coffee, and a cupcake, nobody would buy it, pay it, and pay extra for it and want to eat it. Look at that. Well, you know it. Read that yourself. I kind of agree with you. Every good little place you get continental breakfast. But who wants you know, eggs and bacon and sausage and stuff? Like that? There you go. That's Jake. Now, 
On the our, lighter side, now we're into combat. On our, final, on our final issue of the day, two live crew is being harassed throughout the southern parts of this country by people who have no clue on life what music is. Now wait a minute, you say they're being harassed, and I say they are not being harassed. I, I think they ought to be locked up for the, for the subversive way they're, they're entertaining people out there with their decadence. The Constitution, the Constitution guarantees the right that obscenity is, uh, is has the to word be defined obscenity by the law. is not in the Constitution. Ben no, Franklin didn't even know how to freedom spell Freedom of obscenity. speech, but he sure knew how to, never mind, fly kites. The word obscenity is guaranteed by the the, the court, the big guys up there, the old dudes, Supreme who, were supply, who were actually picked by some of the most conservative governments we've ever seen in this world. But two live crew get out there and they just they just, they just, just do things that are disgusting. But Words are terrible. You want your young people listening to that? Not me. I listen to it on the way over. Well, you it has of artistic significance. As long as something artistic. has you call it artistic? artistic significance. Saying words like that is artistic? Yeah. yeah. Autistic, one of those two. Autistic is more <laughs> like it. I wouldn't say it was artistic. But the freedom is there for one person. As long as one person finds that there is something to the show, then it must be guaranteed by the Constitution. And that's our news for today. This is Dave Vayner and JJ, and we are going to probably not be back again, but what the heck. This may be the last time you'll ever see us, so if you want to send us money and contributions to our cause to be news people, then send uh, that along with your other send it right along. Let's make that one. Money comes to us. Right. Complaints go to Bob. All young women can send their addresses, phone numbers, and their husband's schedule for David. Yep. Do, do not conflict it with the mailman. No, don't conflict or it with the milkman. Or milkman or anything. Anyway, I guess it's time to sign off. Ciao, y'all. You're David. And he's JJ. Thank you, folks. Tune in again. Bye.